Welcome to Watt Performance. Today we are taking a look at the new Ryzen 6800HS using my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro X. AMD promised a lot with the new laptop series and they have really excelled in terms of their integrated graphics and the inclusion of RDNA 2. CPU compute has also improved slightly as well as their power efficiency even though we are on the same node as the 5000 series. The goal of this video is to test how the Ryzen 6800HS performs at each given power level to try to find the optimal balance between power and performance. Looking at the newest offerings of laptop CPUs, I will begin to remove the older node versions. What we have left is a fairly straightforward lineup with only two configurations, 6 cores and 12 threads and 8 cores and 16 threads. Apart from core counts, we then have binning of the chips and TDP levels. U-series targets the ultra portable and thin, HS is, as I understand it, a slightly better bin chip to be able to attain higher core clocks at each given power level. And then we have H and then the ultra powered HX series. What's important to keep in mind though is that the TDP listed here don't always matter all that much. It all has to do with the limits that the laptop manufacturer puts on the chip, uh, which is a balance between power delivery and cooling for each separate laptop. For the CPU benchmark I have used Cinebench R23 both in multi-core and single core mode and the tests have been running for 10 minutes for each power setting used. So starting off with a summary of the Cinebench R23 runs with the different power settings. We see that for multi-core, performance mode tops out at around 12,700 points. Intelligent Cool comes in at around 11,800 points or a 7% drop. And Battery Saver comes in at around 9,800 points or a 23% reduction from the highest performance mode. What's really interesting when looking at this is the, the peak power draw during these settings. We really see the efficiency in the AMD processors. Looking at single score, we see that Intelligent cooling and performance are tied, whilst battery saver comes in at 1425 points. And the main reason for this is that the battery saver and the 15 watt peak power uh, isn't really enough to sustain one uh, single core. Up next, we look at the total power draw for the CPU uh, for the different performance settings during the entire Cinebench run. We can see that the performance mode tops out at around 65 watts peak power during the boost and then averages out at around 55 watts. Intelligent cooling tops out at around 48 watts before it drops down to 40 watts. Then battery saver it just stays at around 15 watts during the entire run. And now we're looking at how that power translates into core clocks. Performance mode tops out at around 4 GHz during the boost phase and then hits an average of 3.8 during the sustain period. Intelligent cooling tops out at 3.7 GHz all core and then drops down to 3.5 GHz. And battery saver is uh, able to handle 2.2 GHz all core. And looking at heat buildup in the processor, performance is able to boost until it hits 9 degrees after which it powers down to 55 watts and then is able to handle around 85 degrees of heat. Intelligent cooling boosts until it reaches 70 degrees after which it's powered down to 40 watts and then averages out at around 75 degrees. And battery saver is just very cool and quiet throughout the entire run. I also wanted to check the performance of the processor at each given TDP interval. So by going in and using the AMD APU tuning utility, you're able to fine tune and set your own TDP levels. So by going into custom presets and changing the three TDP limits here, so you have the regular TDP, you have the long boost and the short boost. And in this case, I'm changing it to 4 to 5 watts. It's also good to go into general settings, tick the auto reapply box and change that value to one second. This means that these settings will reapply every second because in some instances the laptop will itself change the TDP value. I then proceeded to run Cinebench R23 both multi-core and single core for each power level. I used TDP increments of 5 to 10 watts and as you can see in hardware monitor 
you never exceed the TDP you have entered in the tuning utility. You can go below it, but you can't go above it. Finally, the results. The efficiency curve of AMD is optimal for power efficiency, and that's shown just looking at the 35 watt multi-core score, which is high without sacrificing too much power. So it's a great testament to the 6800HS having a TDP of 35 watts, even though this laptop exceeds these TDP limits for higher performance. Going from 45 watts to 55 watts means a 22% increase in power, for which we are only granted a 5% higher score. The single core results are very similar, and the reason for that is that the single core processor only requires around 20 to 21 watts to operate at peak efficiency. To better show the performance gain for each TDP setting, I've also created a chart showing the incremental gain for each 5 watts added. And it's very interesting to see that value starting off with very high benefits in more power, but then scaling down as low as 2% increase in performance for each added 5 watts at 50 watts and higher. With the aid of Hardware Unboxed, I'm also comparing the 6800HS against other laptop processors using CAP TDPs. Most processors in this chart does have a TDP of 45 watts, so the 6800HS is doing an excellent job in terms of performance while consuming less power. It was able to outshine the 5800H despite running on 35 watts instead of 45 watts, and um, it did also manage to score a higher score than the 6800H when running on equal TDPs. So to round off, the AMD Ryzen 6800HS performance is fantastic, especially at lower TDPs, with the overall AMD trade-off of not being able to leverage high power envelopes as well as Intel. However, exceeding 45 to 55 watts usually means bigger, bulkier laptops, and this is why I believe AMD to be the king for slim PC laptops with good battery power. The listed TDP of 35 watts for the processor seems like a perfect cutoff point to optimize performance whilst enabling slim laptops. For the Yoga Slim 7 Pro X, we have power alternatives ranging between 15 watts all the way up to 55 watts of sustained power. I feel this is a perfect setup and I mainly stay in the Intelligent cooling mode for excellent performance and a very manageable fan speeds and no noticeable heat. Uh, again I have done previous reviews on this laptop and I must say I really enjoy it and uh, yeah please uh, check them out if you haven't seen them. And thank you for watching this performance analysis of the Ryzen 6800HS. Please consider liking the video and subscribing for more upcoming content. My next reviews will include battery performance as well as gaming.